Welcome to Rocky Mountain Alliance Church in Golden, B.C. Hello, I'm Pastor Tom Fair from Rocky Mountain Alliance Church in Golden, B.C. Twice before I have brought this message to our church family here in Golden. Come before winter. Winter seems to come every year here. And uh, this is entering our ninth year. So I haven't brought this message every fall. But here it is once again. Come before winter. I'm indebted to Clarence E. McCartney, Presbyterian pastor in the first half of the 20th century in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Every autumn he shared this message, a message based on this word of God with his congregations. And with my adaptations, here it is once again. The Apostle Paul had friends who loved him dearly, he did. He had friends with whom he shared his life, but Towards the end of his life, in what was likely his last prison term, he wrote this to his friend Timothy. Make every effort to come to me soon, for Demas, having loved this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. Pick up Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for service. But Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak which I left at Troas with Carpus and the books, especially the parchments. Now, Timothy had a Jewish mother and a Greek father, and Paul affectionately referred to him as my son in the faith. Timothy's hometown was the place where Paul was first worshipped as a god for the amazing healing that happened there under his ministry with Barnabas. And then when uh, Paul and Barnabas refused such treatment as were being offered, they were stoned and they were left for dead. That was Timothy's hometown. When Paul later returned to the area to check on the churches that he and Barnabas had established, Luke wrote in Acts, a disciple is there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. And he was well spoken of by the brethren who in Lystra and Iconium, Paul wanted this man to go with him. Timothy went with Paul. From that day on, they shared hardships and they joined in life together on the mission Jesus had given them, planting churches throughout the Roman provinces. This, uh, what we call the second letter of Timothy, written by Paul, was likely Paul's last letter. Written to this closest of friends, Timothy, whom he had left in charge of the church at Ephesus. Come and see me, Paul writes. Please come. You can almost hear his pleading. He tells Timothy that he wants him there with him at Rome. And he says, pick up Mark. And that relationship between Paul and Mark is another story. As they And, and stop at Troas on the way. Paul has some scrolls there that he wants. And Paul apparently is a scholar right to the end. Oh, and pick up that cloak. That he left there. Why? Why a robe? Why a cloak? Well, that may have been a cloak and a robe that had been through much with the Apostle Paul and somehow he had been separated from it. And apart from that, it was probably getting cold in the place he was imprisoned. Old men have their ways. We have our favorite things. Bring that coat, Timothy, when you come. Paul continued writing, 2 Timothy 4, Verses 16 to 21. At my first defense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that through me the proclamation might be fully accomplished, that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was rescued out of the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continues writing. Greek Prissa and Aquila and the household of Anisphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth, but Trophimus I left sick at Miletus. And then this final personal request. Make every effort to come before winter. Make every effort to come before winter. Why before winter? Well, because... Once winter sets in, the season for navigation closed in the Mediterranean. 
was very dangerous for ships to venture out to sea. We can see how dangerous it was from the story Luke tells of uh, Paul's shipwreck, his last shipwreck in the book of Acts, he, the story is told. And if Timothy waits until winter, he will have to wait till spring. Paul also has a premonition that he will not last that long, for he also wrote, The time of my departure is at hand. I checked out Google Maps to see how far it was from Ephesus to uh, Rome, and uh, I'm apparently not very good with geography at that part of the world because I was astounded to discover it's a journey by car of about 2,000 kilometers. 2,000 kilometers. And the Greece to Italy portion of the journey re required some sailing at that time, and today it would require a ferry service. I had no idea it was such a long journey. Imagine starting out on foot as soon as you got that letter. That must be what Timothy would have done. At least, I believe he would have. He didn't write any letters that have survived to our day, but we have this request from his old friend, a mentor, and more than a mentor, someone who had been like a father to him. Timothy, come before winter. I'm really wanting that cloak. And more than that, I'd like to see you one last time. Isn't that the message you get through the reading? If you thought you had only a few months left to live, who would you want to see? Who would you call? Who would be asking for you if they thought they had only a few months left to live? I wonder, would anyone say, I'd sure like to see Tom again? Those kinds of friends are rare, aren't they? But how quickly the seasons pass. So soon here, we are at the beginning of another school year. And where has the summer gone? How many are asking that question right to now? The passing of seasons remains a very significant metaphor to stir fresh ideas of new opportunities. But it's also a reminder of how quickly the opportunities of yesterday have come and gone. I want to simply use this image today, the image of a deep abiding friendship between an old man and one he calls his son in the faith. I want to use this image as an invitation from the living God to our own hearts in this season. For our God is an inviting God. Our God is a welcoming God. He likes to use the word today in his invitations. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. He repeats that several times in his word. Today, come before winter is the image given in this text. Once winter came, the opportunity was lost. It's now or never. Come before winter. Bring Mark, bring my cloak, bring my books and letters. Please come before winter. You know how it is when you read a letter from uh, someone that you know you can you can hear their voice in the writings. So sometimes you have known an author of a book, and I was blessed to uh, uh, sit under the teaching of many professors who have uh, written commentaries and study guides that I use in my preparation, and I can hear their voice when I read their words. Well, Timothy could hear the voice of his mentor as he read this letter from Paul, his friend. He couldn't fail to feel for the old man. He could hear the sense, I'm sure, of him being all alone with winter approaching as he talked about where his other friends have gone. Only Luke was with him. I'm sure he didn't mean to deprecate Luke at all, say that that didn't count. But Luke wasn't Timothy. Paul and Timothy had something special, a special bond in their relationship and their friendship. This letter, written from one who has apparently overcome lions in a Roman arena, now reveals the nature of another foe he is battling. Loneliness, along with the creeping cold. Winter is on its way. Who will come to bring companionship and comfort and a cloak or some books? Timothy would have made immediate plans to travel from Ephesus to Rome. He would have left the ministry of the church there in charge of the other elders, and he would be praying all the way, wouldn't he? He would attempt to do all that was asked of him, and more. 
Well, suppose he was delayed. Suppose uh, he was married. Perhaps a child became sick and the anxious mother and daughter could not be left alone. Or, or perhaps some crisis rose in the church, which is prone to happen in churches, as you know, and it required his intervention. Perhaps perhaps he himself got injured or, or was laid up with illness on the way. What if winter came early that year and he could not reach the side of his friend Paul? The weather is not entirely predictable, is it? What then? Would he have given up? Not likely. Not likely. Not as long as there was some possible way of making progress towards his goal. He would have pursued his purpose, I'm sure. But we all know the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. We all know that if you want to make God laugh, you tell him your plans. We all know that we are not in control of very much in this world. And though the plan is good, the intention is uh, worthwhile, it may not have turned out as hoped for. And it, in the event of some unavoidable delay, Timothy would have responded, well, he said to come before winter, I have made my best effort, but winter, the good winter has come before I. Such has been the Lord's will. I will continue my journey. I will see my friend if and when I can see him. I pray it will not be too late. Lord, help him. Lord, help me. Such would have been the prayer and determination of Timothy. Sometimes things are left unsaid and the opportunity passes us by to remedy a situation. Thomas Carlyle was a well-known scholar in his days, in the days of Queen Victoria in England. He wrote a very significant history of the 1789 French Revolution that inspired Charles Dickens' work called A Tale of Two Cities. Well, Thomas Carlyle married Jane Welsh in 1826, and he and his wife had a very tumultuous relationship. Apparently, they weren't always living in the same town because much of their communication was by letter. Over 9,000 letters written between them have been published, apparently. Samuel Butler was a contemporary of uh, Thomas Carlyle, and he wrote, It was very good of God to let Carlyle and Mrs. Carlyle marry one another, and so make only two people miserable and not four. Jane died unexpectedly in 1866, after 40 years of marriage. Over her grave is written the first of many pathetic and regretful tributes paid by Thomas Carlyle to his neglected wife. For 40 years, he wrote, she was a true and loving helpmate of her husband by act and word worthily forwarded him as none who could in all, as none else could in all worthiness and all that he did or attempted. She died suddenly snatched from him and the light of his life as if gone out, he wrote. Oh, that I had you yet for five minutes by my side, that I might tell you all. Some things should not be left unsaid. Some things should not be left until tomorrow. The Apostle Paul calling for his good friend and spiritual son Timothy to come before winter provides a picture of God calling to us. He calls. He calls us. How long until the winter of our life sets in? We do not know the day. We do not know the hour of our own passing. A crisis is coming. A crisis is always coming. It could be our passing that precipitates the crisis for another. How long will we wait to respond to God's invitation to us? How long will we wait to do what is right? Do we even recognize the opportunities right at our door? The prophet Jeremiah wrote this on behalf of his people. The harvest is past. The summer has ended. And we are not saved. Jeremiah 8.20 the harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. There will come a time when it will be too late to respond. Today may be late, 
but it is not yet too late if you are hearing my voice. There is another's voice you need to hear. You need to hear the invitation of the Father. He says, come, come home, come now. There is a welcome waiting for you. Come before winter. Here's the invitation from God himself as Isaiah the prophet records it in Isaiah 55. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend your money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. God's invitation to us. God calls us to share in the wonderful life he has prepared for us in this world and in the world to come. God calls us to save us from the folly of continuing in sinful, hurtful practices in this life and to save us from the awful punishment that our sins deserve in the life to come. Will you come? It is not yet too late. Hear this invitation from God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, recorded in Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and gentle in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, Jesus says. Come and share life with the Father. Come and receive the life of the Son. Come. Turn aside from your own pursuits and pursue the things which will last. Come, give up your trinkets and all that you are so proud of in this world. Let it go and come as you are. Don't fall for the lie that says you have to clean up your life before you can be accepted by God. For all our own righteous deeds are no better than filthy rags compared to the true righteousness of God. Come as you are. There is no other way to come. Come before winter. An old rabbi used to say to his people, repent the day before you die. And of course they responded, Rabbi, we do not know the day of our death. To which he answered, then, repent today. That simply means, turn. Turn and let God change you. Turn towards him. Turn away from our own ways and turn towards God who can rescue and deliver us to the uttermost. Come before winter. Come, God the Father invites you. Come, Jesus, the Son of God, will welcome you. Come, the very Spirit of God affirms the invitation as the last chapter of the Bible has the Spirit and the Bride saying, Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. Come. This is God's word to us today. Come before winter.